Welcome to the Commerce Mentorship Program's online lecture series. My name is Richard and I'm the online tutor for Commerce 294, Managerial Accounting. Today, we'll be focusing on standard costing. I will begin by providing you with a brief overview of the subject matter, pointing out key formulas and tips that you will need to succeed in this topic. I will then guide you through some questions relevant to the course material. This is a good time to test your knowledge and understanding of the subject matter. Pause the video before I present the solution and attempt to complete the question on your own. You will know you have mastered the concepts presented when you are able to complete the questions independently. However, it is good to remember that you should not measure your success on this video alone. Accounting requires practice, and the more exercises you are able to complete from your textbook and from your instructor, the higher your likelihood of success in this course. At the end of this video, I will review our goals and objectives for today. Your job is to ensure that you have met each of these objectives and fully understand them. If you have any questions at any time during the video, make a note of it and speak to your instructor or teaching assistant. Not everyone will initially understand the concepts presented today, and you may find that you require some assistance. Do note that this is perfectly natural. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine and analyze material, price, and quantity variances, Determine and analyze labor rate and efficiency variances. Determine and analyze variable overhead spending and efficiency variances. Determine and analyze fixed overhead variances. And determine and analyze sales price, profit, and sales mix variances. The concept of standard costing is generally associated with manufacturing companies and their direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead costs. Manufacturing companies generally assign an expected or standard direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead costs to a product. However, companies still have to pay the actual costs. For example, if it takes more inspection time than expected to complete a handbag, the company still has to pay the worker for the extra time. As such, it is not uncommon to have variances, otherwise known as differences between actual and standard or expected costs. If a variance arises, management knows that costs have differed from what was expected or the standard. If actual costs turn out to be greater than standard costs, the variance is unfavorable. If actual costs turn out to be less than standard costs, the variance is favorable. If the variance is unfavorable, this tells management that if all other costs stay constant, the company's profit will be less than expected. If the variance is favorable, this tells management that if all other costs stay constant, the company's profit will be higher than expected. To conduct standard costing, you require knowledge of several formulas. There are two pertaining to each of direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead. While there are many ways to conduct standard costing, and your instructor may teach you a different way, I believe that the easiest method is to memorize the formulas I will present to you in the next few slides. When it comes to direct materials, we have two formulas that you should be concerned about, the material price variance and the material quantity variance formula. The material price variance involves multiplying the actual quantity purchased by the difference between the actual price and standard price of one unit of direct material. This can be summarized as AQ purchase times bracket AP minus SP close bracket. The material quantity variance involves multiplying the standard price per unit by the difference between the actual quantity used and the standard quantity expected to produce the same number of units. This can be summarized as SP times bracket AQ minus XSQ close bracket. When it comes to direct labor, we have two formulas that we should be concerned about, the labor rate and labor efficiency variance formulas. The labor rate variance involves multiplying the actual hours used by the difference between the actual rate paid per hour and the standard rate per hour. This can be summarized as AH times AR minus SR. The labor efficiency variance involves multiplying the standard rate per hour by the difference between the actual hours used and the standard hours required to produce the same amount of units. This can be summarized as SR times AH minus SH. Variable overhead variance formulas are exactly the same as the direct labor variance formulas. 
The variable overhead spending variance involves multiplying the actual hours used by the difference between the actual rate paid per hour and the standard rate per hour. This can be summarized as AH times AR minus SR. The variable overhead efficiency variance involves multiplying the standard rate per hour by the difference between the actual hours used and the standard hours required to produce the same amount of units. This can be summarized as SR times AH minus SH. The fixed overhead spending variance formulas involve taking actual fixed costs and subtracting budgeted fixed costs. The sales price variance formula involves multiplying the actual quantity sold by the difference between the actual price per unit and the standard price per unit. This can be summarized as AQ sold times AP minus SP. The profit variance is defined as the budgeted profit subtracted by the actual profit. Finally, the sales mix variance is actual contribution margin per unit minus budgeted contribution margin per unit times the actual number of units. Let's try an example. Remember, if the actual costs turn out to be more than what is expected, we have an unfavorable situation. If actual costs turn out to be less than what is expected, we have a favorable situation. Joe's Hardware manufactures lawnmowers. Each lawnmower requires 20.5 kilograms of direct material at a standard cost of $2 per kilogram. It takes two hours to produce each lawnmower, and lawnmower production workers are paid at a rate of $20 per hour. In April, a total of 10,000 lawnmowers were produced. 220,000 kilograms of material were used in production and were purchased for $385,000. Total labor costs were $602,000. It ended up taking 28,000 hours to complete the lawn mowers. The required here is to find the material quantity variance. A reminder that this is the standard price per unit multiplied by the difference between the actual quantity used and the standard quantity used to produce the same amount of units. Our standard price is $2 per kilogram. The question also states that 220,000 kilograms of material were actually used in the production process. This is our AQ. Our SQ will also be based on 10,000 lawn mowers, since that is the amount our AQ is based on. At an estimate of 20.5 kilograms of direct materials, the SQ is the product of 20.5 kilograms and 10,000 lawn mowers. The result is a $30,000 unfavorable variance as the actual quantity is greater than the quantity expected or the standard quantity. Let's move on to the material price variance. Our actual quantity purchase is 220,000 kilograms since the question states that 220,000 kilograms of material were used in the production process and there is no mention of any material purchases. Our actual price is a $385,000 of actual material costs divided by the 220,000 kilograms used. The standard price is listed in the question as $2 per kilogram. The result is a $55,000 favorable variance as the actual price is less than the standard price quoted. Let's move on to the labor rate variance. The company ended up using 28,000 hours to produce its 10,000 lawnmowers, so 28,000 is our actual hours used. Our actual rate per hour was the $602,000 in labor costs divided by 28,000 hours used, and our standard rate was quoted at $20 per hour. The result is a $14,000 unfavorable variance, as the actual rate is more than the standard labor rate quoted. Finally, Let's calculate the labor efficiency variance. The company ended up using 28,000 hours to produce its 10,000 lawn mowers. So 28,000 is our actual hours used. Our standard hours can be calculated by multiplying the two hours estimated to produce each lawn mower by the 10,000 lawn mowers we actually produce. The standard rate is quoted at $20 per hour. The result is a 160,000 unfavorable variance as the actual hours used is more than the standard hours expected. This concludes our online tutorial on standard costing. Let's review our objectives for today. By now, you should be able to determine and analyze the material price and quantity variances, 
determine and analyze labor rate and efficiency variances, determine and analyze variable overhead spending and efficiency variances, determine and analyze fixed overhead variances, and determine and analyze sales price, profit, and sales mix variances. Remember to always keep the required in mind. Some questions in Commerce 294 may require you to use several tools and several solution techniques. Don't ever get sidetracked and calculate the wrong thing. For additional problems, please visit us online at cmp.cus.ca. If you have additional questions, please consult your professor or teaching assistants. Thank you.